Heifer development is really very important to a rancher. You are setting the baseline uh, with getting the right cattle back into your herd with proper culling techniques. As you filter those heifers in your herd, you'll find that five, six, seven years down the road, you are no longer managing the problems. I got involved in, in heifer development when I was on faculty at Kansas State University as a beef cattle extension specialist. I just got to thinking that maybe it was time for the industry to consider the female side of the equation. The industry at the time was doing a good job on the bull side of the equation in terms of getting and propagating our best genetics. But the female was kind of ignored at that point in time. So I stepped away from the university and uh, started this um, uh, project. Uh, and uh, built a yard from the ground up. During that time frame, uh, we developed and bred AI'd, uh, something over 125,000 head of heifers, representing 31 states. Economically important traits that I think producers really ought to pay attention to um, are such things as longevity. Um, you know, if you get a heifer developed correctly from weaning to first breeding and uh, you get her bred ahead of the mature cow herd, you have a much better chance of retaining her in the mature cow herd with her second and third calf. So longevity is very important. Fertility is very important. Uh, don't just keep inseminating her time after time after time in hopes of getting her bred. Give her a fair shot. If she doesn't settle, she doesn't need to be back home in the cow herd. Disposition, I think, is really important to a, to a cow herd. Uh, being able to manage those cows easily when they go back home uh, is important. And, you know, how those cattle are handled affects that. Effective stockmanship techniques affect that. But there's also genetic uh, inheritance of disposition that need to be taken into account. And if there was a troublemaker in the group, you'd be amazed at how much you can settle a, a group of heifers when you get one troublemaker out of their midst. So there's a lot of talk in the industry about what is the best way to develop heifers. Should you develop them on grass uh, as opposed to a semi-confinement dry lot situation? Uh, grass is okay in terms of, of the physiology of developing a heifer, uh, but uh, with land costs being the way they are, if you put a pencil to that, uh, when you're developing heifers on grass and taking those ranch grass resources, with a female that doesn't produce you any saleable product for two and a half years, it's, it's hard to make that work financially. It's very important that they are fed a high roughage diet so that when they return to the ranch, they will reproduce on a forage-based diet. I am not in favor of feeding high concentrate diets to get a heifer bred. I think eventually what you're going to do is you're going to develop a genetic set of cows that need that kind of energy in order to get bred. By limit feeding, we're very carefully controlling what these heifers get, and we're kind of sifting off both ends of those heifers that aren't as fertile, maybe the smaller ones that tend to get too fleshy, or the big ones that are too hard doing, and we want that middle cut both from a frame score and a body condition score, science shows time after time after time, those are your most fertile females in your herd. There's a lot of confusion in the industry about, you know, what products a person should use, timing on those, on those products, but uh, making sure that a, that a heifer has at least two rounds of a modified live five-way viral in her at pre-weaning and weaning or at weaning and then when she maybe goes into a developmental program, the timing on that can adjust a little bit depending on a rancher's program. I like to use a product with uh, seven-way and Haemophilus in it. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, two doses is enough. Uh, and if you are using the Haemophilus portion of that, you, you need to give a boost on that as well. One shot of Haemophilus won't do you much good. You do need to boost that as well. So the easiest way to get that done is to use a combination product with 7-Way and Haemophilus in it. Uh, good parasite control, both internal and external, of course, is very important. And that will vary according to parts of the country. Some additional things that a person might want to consider is a pink eye vaccine at some point in time. And then, of course, a 10-way um, uh, shot about 35 to 45 days prior to breeding. 
For someone who does not plan to time inseminate, which we never did, we always bred according to visual heat detection. Best bang for your buck probably is that very simple Colorado MGA program. So that program in a nutshell is feeding MGA for 14 days at a half a milligram per head per day as part of the feeding program. 19 days later, we would give a shot of prostaglandin. So you'd often get about 30% of the heifers in heat at what we called the 48 hour sort. And then from that point through the peak day, which is the following day and then the morning after, we'd get 90% plus of those heifers in heat in that, in that time period. Cedars are another way to provide the MGA, um, but when you're handling big numbers the way we were and we were running a feed truck past them every day anyway, it was easier and cheaper to provide oral MGA. There's some differences in heat detection when you handle hot pens versus picking up individuals in a pen of heifers, what we called odds. When you're managing hot pens, there's a lot of activity. So one of the rules that we had for our crew was they had to uh, observe a heifer with a good stand, a good solid stand at least twice before she was sorted from the pen. And if you just implement that one simple rule, I think that'll take care of about 98% of your inaccuracies. So then what you're beginning to do is you're beginning to separate the hots from the heifers that have not yet shown heat or what we call non-responders. And then the next morning when we come in, we're not having to mess with looking through those cattle. Now we're dealing with a smaller pen of cattle, so the pen just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then when we breed the heifers that we found in heat the night before, they are also pinned separately in what we called cool off pens, because you don't want a freshly bred heifer in that den of activity. So managing your hot pen and keeping your hot, your cool offs and your non-responders separate is very important to staying ahead of the activity level, if you will, and getting accurate heat detecting. You can take care of an awful lot of your problems by just simply getting the right heifers back into your cow herd. And that all starts with proper heifer development, starting from weaning to first breeding, timing of breeding those heifers, and getting the functional cattle back home.